We have multiple penny stocks to go over today. Three of these penny stocks are profitable. Two of these penny stocks have not diluted a single share in over a year. Actually, two these same two companies have reduced their outstanding shares, one of them by 300 million, one of them reduced by, you know, I think at least 100 or a few hundred million as well. One of them is trading at 0 0.008. Right now, they have a small market cap of $10 million and they have $25 million in total assets and they are predicting around $30 million in annual revenue for 2022. Once again, trading at 0 0.008, very undervalued financials will be posted by the end of the month. This is the same one that reduced their uh, outstanding shares by $300 million and they are actually planning to buy back around $200 million outstanding shares in the near future. You are definitely gonna wanna stick around and hear about this company because they have a lot going on. Just one week ago, they executed a MOU agreement to acquire majority ownership interest in PPM Toys. This is a Mexican founded toy manufacturing and licensing company with offices in Hong Kong and the US. PPM Toys has a 35 year business history in these fields and has sold millions of toys for brands including Barbie, Tonka, Peanuts, Hasbro Properties, probably not saying some of these right, and Warner Brother Properties. They count regional giants such as Walmart, Amazon, and one of Mexico's largest department store chains as their clients and the other company i'm talking about is trading at 0 0.017 just under two cents they have their financials their annual financials coming out probably by the end of the month or very soon this is one that has not diluted and over a year actually reduced their outstanding shares as well in 2022 uh, for Q1 of 2022, they did $12 million in total revenue. For Q2, they did $8 million in total revenue. And for Q3, they did $20 million in total revenue. This is one that no one really knows about and just needs a lot of volume to move and has their uh, upcoming financials as a big catalyst coming out very soon that could drive this one up like crazy. This is one that only has $250 million outstanding shares they haven't diluted in over a year um in 2021 they had 324 million outstanding shares they now have just under 250 million so it has actually went down that only has a market cap of four million dollars and they have 55 million dollars in total assets they are profitable they did 20 million dollars in revenue in q3 of 2022 financials will be coming very soon and they actually had a net income of eight million dollars in q3 out of the 20 million dollars in revenue so very good margins they're doing very well growing very fast the profitable stock i'm talking about will have 2022 revenue numbers being released this week with 2022 annual reports being posted next week this is a profitable company aggressively growing this is one that is selling their products at walmart's cvs and rite aid and much more this is one that is growing their financials very quickly doing around seven million dollars the last two quarters they profited just under four million dollars so their margins are very good i will be going over multiple different stocks in this video you want to watch every single minute tap the like button put notifications on and subscribe so you do not miss out on these plays three of these stocks are profitable and growing very quickly like i said two of these haven't diluted at all in the last year they actually had their os reduced so this is very good to see all right first ticker i'm talking about is the one that is predicting around 28 million dollars in total revenue for 2022 they are trading at 0 0.0083 up one percent today share structure market cap of 10.3 million dollars as you can see they with a market cap of 10.3 million dollars but they have 25.6 million dollars in total assets what does that tell you they are very undervalued and they are profitable uh as you can see they do have 1.2 over 1.2 billion outstanding shares almost half of those are locked up looks like the float is around 700 million so the share structure isn't you know that great but it also isn't that crazy as well for an otc company could be a lot worse looks like the as is at 2.5 billion so they still have room for dilution but as you can see right here as you can see in december 31st of 2021 they had 1.4 billion outstanding shares today uh on, in 2023 in march they have only one point or they have under 1.3 billion outstanding shares so this has decreased and they haven't diluted in over a year or two see this is what you want to see looking at their financials looking at their financials you can see they are growing very fast uh it looks like they did 24 million dollars in revenue for 2021 and as you can see right here they've already done that and they still have q4 
coming out very soon. This is a big catalyst. You can see their revenue numbers are continuing to go up. They had some very big news coming out. They had PPM Toys uh, MOU agreement for that last week. And just today, they have a definitive agreement for a wellness and health uh, company. This acquisition estimates revenues of $8 million from their current and pipeline contracts, and they are projected to grow up to $20 million by 2027. Very big news here. Didn't really move the stock price up that much, but this one has earnings coming out very soon. Um, looking at some of their, looking at their 2022 report to shareholders, they had 100 franchised and licensed Epiphany Cafe outlets established in 2022. Very good uh, distribution here and marketing by this company. Pro product distribution team in the United Arab Emirates has brought our F&B products to North America ahead of a formal, formal launch of Epiphany Cafe in Canada this, to this year. So they are uh, growing all over the globe, it looks like. They finalize as a stake in UK-based cybersecurity solutions provider CyberQ. There's a lot more you can go on OTC Markets and read about yourself, but they are doing a lot right now. Um, so as you can see, what I what I was talking about earlier in the video, they successfully reduced the company's outstanding shares by converting the common shares of the key officers and partners into the new class of preferred shares, which were Series B preferred shares. The first batch amounting to reducing uh, just under 300 million common shares that were converted, developing a roadmap for restructuring our corporate ownership. They have an arranged number of deals to buy back substantial sh uh, shares from certain major shareholders, which they'll be completing to do in the next year. This includes plans to buy back at least 200 million shares from one of the key sh uh, shareholders of the company, BNCM, and raise capital through non-dilutive means to buy back roughly 100 million shares currently on the open market. So once again, their OS will probably decrease if they follow through this by at least 100 million shares. Reporting their financial, they will be reporting their annual financials for the year 2022 before the 31st of March. And they were they expect the annual revenue in the range of 27 to $28 million. So if you calculate right here, minus 28. So they're looking at $6.8 million in revenue or around that. So, you know, Q4 numbers may not actually be that great, but you know, we'll have to wait and see for those. They are profitable, profiting around $2 million each quarter, trading at 0 0.008 and a lot of big catalysts on the horizon for this company. Next company we have to look at with big financials coming out very soon, any day now up or by the end of the month, hopefully, Trading at 0 0.0175 GEGR Genzel Energy Group. This is a holding company that is very diversified in their holdings. It has a market cap of $4.3 million and they have $55.8 million in total assets. In 2021, they had 324 million outstanding shares. They now have 250 million outstanding shares. So they haven't been diluting in a very long time, actually reduced their OS. This is very good to see. They're, for Q3 of 2022, they did $8 million in net income, just under $20 million in revenue. As you can see, the uh, Q over Q growth, you know, $12 million, $8 million in Q2, and jumped all the way up to $20 million in Q3. So when the annual revenues come out very soon and Q4, if it is looking very good, this one could see a very big run. Like I said, this one really doesn't have much volume. No one really knows about it. Hasn't had an update in a long time. So I'm expecting some updates from the CEO and some PRs and definitely the financials will be coming out soon. Talking about is ticker INND. The only issue I have with this company is they have a very bad share structure. So they have 14 point or just under 15 billion authorized shares. 8.5 billion outstanding shares so a very ugly share structure but they are trading at 0 0.005 with a market cap of 51 million dollars um their company tweeted out today that their 2022 revenue numbers will be released this week and 2022 annual reports will be posted next week to otc markets before the deadline so and they just announced that in q1 2023 they won accounting disputes with walmart which in turn gave them a reversal of just under $1 million due in 2022. They're reconciling 2022 to reflect the awarded credit. So a very big week coming out for INND. They are an over-the-counter hearing aid company. So one thing that's very big for this company is before the FDA approved 
the sale of over-the-counter hearing aids without the need for a prescription. So now any, anyone over the age of 18 or older with perceived mild to moderate hearing loss can now purchase hearing aids dire directly from stores or online retailers. And that's exactly what INND is doing. This is a very good market to get into because this was updated on November 10th, 2022. The FDA's final rule establishing over-the-counter hearing aids issued on August 17th, 2022 to improve access to safe, effective, and affordable hearing aids for millions of Americans is now in effect. This action enables consumers that are 18 years of age or older with perceived mild to moderate hearing loss to purchase hearing aids directly from stores or online retailers without the need for a medical exam prescription or fitting adjustment by an audiologist. So before this rule, um, you would have to have a prescription, a medical exam, and you couldn't just go up to a store and buy a hearing aid. So this is why I really like this company. This is a very competitive market, but this company, you know, is already in this market doing very well. So this is why I really do like what they're doing. Looking at their financials, they have very good growth. And what I really like is they have extremely good margins. So in Q2 of 2022, they did just under $7 million. They had a net profit of just under $4 million. Very, very good margins. Revenue uh, of $6.5 million in Q3 of 2022 and net income of $3.7 million. Very good margins. And I'm very curious to see how q4 is going to look so every company i'm talking about has very big catalyst coming up with their financials definitely have to keep an eye on them put them on your watch list see what happens all right guys one stock that is up today we want to talk about actually one of my subscribers asked me to do to cover this stock, guys and i you know i have been thinking about it and i'm sorry i haven't been able to cover uh as of lately there's just not that much known about this company about the insiders holding I'm, i've been waiting on some sec uh I'm, I've been I've really been waiting on some SEC filings to confirm it, but I'm going to show you their Twitter and you guys can just take what you want from their Twitter. And if it is true, then this company has a lot going on. So trading just at 0 0.09, just at 10 cents. This is one that's very risky because they in order to stay listed on the Nasdaq without doing a reverse split, they need to man maintain a minimum bid price of one dollar for at least 10 days. And right now they're trading at 10 cents. They have a long way to go. So this is one that is very risky, but they have some very big news coming out. As you can see, their last few years, they did they went from 23 million revenue in 2018 to 20 million in 2019, up to 27 million in 2020, and 32 million dollars in 2021. So for their last three years, not counting 2022, their revenue has continued to go up and their margins have continued to improve. So this is what you really want to look at on their balance sheet. It looks like they do have around 114 million total assets. Um, this has continued to go up as well. At their Twitter, this is all I'm going on here because I'm running out of time, but I'm going to show you guys some updates and you guys can do your own research. You know, this may not even be their official Twitter, but apparently it is. It says. It says, uh, Stuart Lohr's 29 million share buyback of PBTS stock will be evidenced by a 13D filing tomorrow. This is when I, this is what I want to see with this company, some actual filings to prove what they're saying. Three hours ago, they tweeted they acquired 51% of a digital trade infrastructure company, DTI Group. Their revenues for 2022 was over $9 million. This acquisition is a strategic move that contributes to the expansion of PowerBridge's operations by building a digital trade ecosystem. They announced on March 20, and this is something, you know, I, I didn't want to make a video of it till I saw the actual proof and evidence of it so march 20th the ceo stuart lore bought an additional 29 million shares of the company stock demonstrating his confidence in the company's trajectory so this is one i want to see sec filings for and proof of so this is definitely a very big week for the otc companies and other stocks as well a lot of earnings coming out make sure you put notifications on and like the video because it really helps me out and as always guys i will see you on the next video